Thank you, uh, thank you, Patricio. Uh, not sure under these circumstances whether it's good to be first, but uh, but thanks very much, and thank you very much for this invitation to, to speak here uh, to the Institute and uh, also to our Argentinian friends uh, that we have this opportunity to be here together. Uh, thanks also for mentioning the Chatham House rule. I think that's important. I also want to make uh, a point that I'm speaking here on my personal capacity. Uh, however, I think that my views will not be far away from those of the Austrian Foreign Ministry. Um, I think you, you um, have very cleverly sort of set the stage already. Well, I was going to do that actually, and I was going to, since I just came before, last week I was in New York at the General Assembly, I thought I would read out maybe one or two quotes from, from speeches that we, 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 we got to hear. You might have followed them anyway, uh, you, Gustav, will probably have. Uh, but I thought that it would be interesting maybe to set the stage just to, to listen to some of the language that was, that was, that was uh, read out or, or stated at the UN. And one of them, of course, and everyone will start with the speech by the US President, President Trump, said, uh, and I think one of the quotes uh, which we've heard uh, recently now repeated in the last couple of uh, days is one which starts with, that is why America will always choose independence and cooperation over global governance, control and domination. I honor the right of every nation in this room to pursue its own custom, beliefs, and traditions. And a second quote, uh, which I thought interesting, was, we will never surrender America's sovereignty to an unelected, unaccountable global bureaucracy. America is governed by Americans. We reject the ideology of globalism, and we embrace the doctrine of patriotism. I think that, that that was one of the statements, and I think that it was not the only one that, that stressed the, the issue of sovereignty. One interesting speech I also thought was by uh, President Macron, who last year had been the one to lead the charge of the international multilateralists uh, when, uh, the, when President Trump was the first to come with his sovereignty uh, approach and America first approach. This year, he had, uh, President Macron adopted a slightly nuanced approach. He stressed the importance of sovereignty. He said it is very important to understand that sovereign nations are the ones that do carry the, the, the torch of, uh, of international relations. But he also uh, had something to say when he said, uh, I know that uh, here among this room, the General Assembly, we are all fed up and tired with multilateralism. And <coughs> multilateralism is no longer a la mode, but still it is the principle that we have to work with and still it is the, the instrument with which we have to work. And we had, of course, also a, a, a whole number of states, like small states like Austria, uh, other states, uh, especially those from Latin America, who very strongly argued the need for uh, um, uh, multilateralism, including the Argentinian speech, which stressed the fundamental principle and the importance that uh, uh, multilateralism has uh, for, for Argentina. Uh, and so we, we get, we see that what we have at the moment in the international arena is a big discourse between unilateralists, uh, my state first, uh, uh, including uh, Joschka Fischer, who have this we first approach, and those who stress that international cooperation uh, is the way to go. It's not, I, maybe I, I mentioned now the US uh, because it is probably the most placative, the, the, the one which, which says it as clearly as, 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 as nobody else. But, but it's not only the US who has adopted this approach, and it's also not at the General Assembly where we see the actions. We also watch them, and not only this year, but for a couple of years already, uh, when we had uh, Russia uh, in the, the, with the illegal annexation of, uh, of, of the Crimea and, and its actions in eastern Ukraine, when we had many African states rejecting the international court, uh, uh, criminal court, uh, and also the Philippines in this context, uh, and also within the European Union, we have had increasingly difficulties in forming consensus on issues which used to be something where the EU was extremely united, such as on human rights. So, what do we what do we notice, and what trends do we see in international relations at the moment? Um, there is a, a a trend and a shift away from our general international system. Um, me first instead of multilateral procedures. When we used to come to international organizations uh, or, or conferences, we used to come together because we wanted to find a solution together. Now that has changed. Nowadays, several of us come to these fora, come to these organizations 
not to join together to find a common solution, but to underline an individual national position and use the organization as a platform to explain back to the own electorate <coughs> usually uh, that they were different, that they were in opposition to what the rest of the establishment was doing, that they would, that, that, that they would oppose to what was happening. So it's the, 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 the fora that we built to solve problems are now rather used as platforms, as stages by which you can uh, expound your, your national position. And this is being done increasingly not only by the bad guys, but by everyone. It's also states like Austria, I don't want to excuse ourselves in this. We also increasingly use these organizations as platforms to make a point, especially by the media. A second thing that we've noticed is there is a lost, we've lost somehow the art of compromise. Um, every international negotiator, every diplomat knows that the only way we can achieve solutions is by giving in. But we live in a time, I think it's not necessarily a question only for international affairs, it's a societal issue where individualism counts. I have three kids. When we sit down together in the evening and decide we want to watch a film, it's almost impossible. Every kid has the own, their own smartphone, they have their own lists, their Netflix series, their movies they want to watch. It's, they're not agreeing to watch something which they don't feel like watching because they have their own world. It's their world on their smartphone and it, it doesn't require compromise. They get 100% of what they want. And somehow this is also felt in international organizations increasingly as well. I come to a meeting, I want 100% of what's on my agenda. And if I don't get that, I'm not going to go away with 99%. I'm going to go away. I'm going to leave the organization. I'll go to a different platform, a different circle. I'll go uh, uh, and, 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 and sign up with, with other friends where I can get 100% of what I want. And this is, of course, a huge problem. Uh, we see this very strongly at the moment, especially with the United States. Again, it's not only them, I have to stress that, but for them, they, they, make, they, they really make a point of underlining it. They're saying, if this is a bad deal for us, we're not getting everything, we'll walk away. Like the, uh, the JCPOA, the Iran deal, uh, the Americans were happy with uh, that 98% that of what they wanted was fulfilled, but two elements were missing, and so... <coughs> They walk away, they, they don't like the deal anymore because it doesn't correspond to everything what they want. There's also another trend that, that, uh, uh, that um, I, uh, I, I, I see in international uh, affairs, and this is something which goes back a little bit more already. This is the, the revolt against uh, the political correct establishment. Uh, it's become fashionable and cool uh, to be, uh, you know, to, to, to speak against uh, the, the, the political correct language coming from international organizations such as the UN and the ICC. Um, it, is, it, is, it is seen as something that, that is macho and, and strong and you demonstrate your, 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 your coolness uh, and, your, and your strength by opposing um, established principles, principles uh, and, and uh, being uh, tough on and, and using non-gender sensitive language, if you wish, these sort of things which are seen as soft and derided as, as being outdated and old. Uh, that's also a trend, of course, which is worrying for, for, for many of us who have painstakingly over decades established principles and try to improve um, and, and make the world itself softer. <laughs> And, and easier to live in for people of all types and of all um, orientations. And, and this has, uh, of, uh, in my view, also uh, a real concern because we are definitely moving away and back. And, and, and states like Argentina and Austria are very much now on the defensive, especially in the human rights area, where we are defending uh, principles that we have established uh, over the over there. And, uh, what Another, another trend um, uh, is that, uh, that generally the, the concept of international law uh, itself is, is at least put in question. Um, if we only consider 
international law as legally binding when we want, uh, when we like it, uh, that's not law. Uh, that has nothing to do with the quality of law. Law is supposed to be, in our understanding, and I think that uh, both Argentina and Austria here share maybe a, a, a philosophical understanding of, of bindingness of rule of law, but simply that this is an instrument that we use, that we agree to use, and that we consider as something which uh, coerces us to certain, and constrains us to certain um, acts and, and certain activity, rather than something which we can uh, interpret uh, differently every time we, 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 we want to have a change in, 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 our, in our behavior. Uh, and uh, by uh, declaring <coughs> international legal agreements or, or international treaties, such as the Budapest Memorandum, as irrelevant, uh, it, it used to be that you, we said uh, big states, big uh, states will, will, might be more, more, more likely to violate international law. But we now see that also uh, so-called smaller states uh, decide to quit uh, treaties when it no longer suits them uh, or, or simply not apply uh, conventions when they, when they want it. And I think also, again, and again, I have to use the U.S., the, the recent a decision to leave all the treaties where the International Criminal, uh, the International Court of Justice has a role, uh, of course, is also worrying because for us, international justice, uh, the international judicial system, is something that is that is particularly important. And if you wish, one of the, the, the crowning achievements of our civilization that our states have agreed to submit themselves under the jurisdiction of a higher body, of a judicial body, which will peacefully solve conflicts. And by, by um, criticizing these institutions, such as the ICC, or, or, or leaving them, such as the ICJ, that, that then, uh, of course, strongly undermines, undermines the system. There's also an interesting trend that we're now confronted with new forms. China, of course, has simply stepped in, in a way, and said that it is the champion of multilateralism. Uh, that, in theory, would be very good, because China is a very powerful state, and we need powerful states to uh, subscribe to multilateralism. But Chinese multilateralism is different than what we understand by multilateralism. I think that's very important, and we have to also be aware that the current system as it is has been established very much from, from, from uh, a tradition of, if you wish, liberal values, thought, which has built up the system. And now we are witnessing increasingly alternative models to that which also carry the label of multilateralism. So we have to be aware that if we want to uh, maintain what we have, uh, this will require uh, some uh, caution uh, towards different approaches and, and also some activity because we might lose what we have. So in a nutshell, and I realize my 15 minutes probably are up, uh, but just to say that we now are confronted with basically two choices uh, for, for states of, of mid-size and, and smaller size at least. Uh, the one is that we try all we can to keep the current system and make it better, make it more palatable for those who criticize it, make it more effective, make it more usable, user-friendly if you wish, make it more modern, uh, uh, and explain to everyone who, who, who is fed up with the established system, who, who doesn't believe in it anymore, who wants change, to explain better the positive uh, usefulness of, of our system. Or the second thing is, is to manage a shift into a new world, which probably will be a world of pluriunilateral cooperation, where many of us unilaterally act, and sometimes it will be together in the same direction, uh, but sometimes it won't. Uh, and there will be a, of course, much less predictability, which means in order to achieve stability, you will definitely, on the security sector, need a lot more armament and a lot more uh, security. So this will require states like Austria to rethink its security strategy, because as a small neutral state, you are very much alone in this in that sort of world. Uh, and I think uh, there will be probably nothing, no other choice for small states like us than to seek uh, the shelter of big ones to, uh, to protect us. Uh, and, and this would mean for countries the size of Austria, and there are lots in Europe, uh, and there are also lots in the world, uh, a, a real rethink, complete rethink of their security strategy and how they set themselves up. 
Now, we in Austria, we very much still believe that the old system, uh, even if it's absolutely not perfect, is worth defending and <coughs> worth reforming and worth maintaining. Uh, and therefore, we are putting an enormous effort in, for our uh, meager means, uh, a big effort into, into trying to shore up, to strengthen uh, multilateralism uh, and our, our keep our system. Uh, for example, um, the, our OSCE presidency 2017 was very much devoted to that issue. One of the priorities of our EU presidency, we will afterwards have uh, bilateral consultations with, uh, with, with uh, the Argentine Foreign, Foreign Ministry. And uh, one of our priorities of our EU presidency also is strengthening multilateralism. Uh, we are also brought it into the EU, and it's part of the EU global strategy this year. This year is the year devoted to strengthening multilateralism. So we are doing whatever we can, and we're also seeking partners. And of course, I also come here to Argentina to find a partner. And it is, I have to say, that even before Gustavo speaks, uh, some, uh, it is a state where I feel very much reassured that uh, uh, we have a strong partner in multilateralism here in Buenos Aires. Thank you. Thank you.